Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're at the shop to work on the Honda S2000. This car's brakes have been due for service for a little while. They are the original pads and rotors that came with the car when I bought it. And so now we're going to be looking at installing a new StopTech kit. This kit came with slotted rotors and street pads. The street pads are specific for this application because this car sees far more daily driving than it does track driving. But with a hill climb coming up next weekend, we wanted to make sure we had sufficient stopping power before attending the event. Right now, the only two issues this system has is that the rear rotors have been squeaking slightly and the front end is not braking equally. So while we're installing these new pads and rotors, we will also be flushing the system to see if the fluid may be contaminated. So let's take a look at the kit and see what we've got. As you can see here, the kit includes front and rear rotors for the vehicle. The rotors look very high quality. I see nothing wrong with them. The coatings are great. The machine works great. Very, very strong contrast to the rotors that were included with the kit I used on the Mustang. This kit also includes new brackets for the brake pads as well as the brake pads. The brake pads were packaged really well. There was no damage to them when we pulled them out. I couldn't find any flaws with this kit to speak of. Ultimately, they even included a few stickers in case you just needed that few extra horsepower for your vehicle to truly utilize the braking performance. Paired with the StopTech axle pack, I'm using ATE Type 200.4 brake fluid. Since I don't have the luxury of sponsored parts, I'm going with things that have good recommendations because they'll probably have to be on the car for quite some time. All of these parts look good and this fluid looks like it'll be a perfect match for the setup at the upcoming hill climb. So as you can see here, the hub is very rusted and corroded and what you probably can't see but you will be able to see in this overlaid picture is the fact that not only is it worn enough for me to catch my fingernail on, this is actually so worn, it's probably halfway through, if not more, into the venting behind it. This might actually be the original rotor that came with the car back in 2005. It looks like somebody probably did brake pads, but that's about it. So it's a good thing we're pulling these off of here. Unfortunately, Honda uses some Phillips head screws to hold the rotor to the surface when you're assembling and placing the wheel on the car. And that means these Phillips head screws probably haven't been removed since the car was first assembled. And they are extremely difficult to break loose when they're this corroded. So I may have to resort to drastic measures to get them off of here. But let's just start at the top and use an impact and see where we get to. All right, so unfortunately, we're resorting to drastic measures already. The electric impact is not gonna get these loose and will likely strip out the heads. So we're moving over to a regular manual impact and I'll try my dead blow first just because I like my fingers, but if needed, I'll move over to like my eight pound mini sledge or something. So let's see what this does. So, as you can see here, my impact bit is losing the battle. I've actually nearly twisted the end out of my impact. So, I'm going to soak these things in PB Blaster, give them a little while, and then come back to them. So, let's see how this pans out. So, while we're waiting for the PB Blaster to do its job, we'll go ahead and pull the caliper off of here. Um, you can go ahead and split the caliper apart if you want to pull the pins out of the center of it with a 13 millimeter or you can pull the big bracket bolts which is the more common way of sliding off as a single unit with a 17. So I will be pulling it apart whichever way it comes apart. These look like they may not have ever been off of the car before so 13 years worth of sediment may make this a difficult process. So let's give it a shot. All right, well, after years of faithful service, this bit has bit the dust. So with the new StopTech rotor in place, you can see the nice finish that is provided on the center section, and that finish is also provided on the cooling fins. That'll help cut down corrosion and rust while it's on the car. It'll also prevent the problem we just had with the factory unit of being unable to break it free and get it off over the center of the hub. This unit also has slots carved into the face of the rotor. In theory, that helps evacuate gas and dust. In practical application for how this car is driven, they probably won't make as much of a difference performance-wise as they will aesthetically. 
but they look pretty good. So we'll just put them on here for now and see if we actually notice any noise difference from them rubbing against the pads. So unfortunately, I didn't buy new Phillips bolts to go in here, but all they do is hold it to the surface of the hub. So I think they should be fine to reuse. I will go ahead and put a dab of Loctite anti-seize on there just to make sure they come back out since they are partially stripped already. And also just to be on the safe side, um, I won't snug these down very tight. I'm not too worried about them backing their way out because there'll be a wheel clamped over the top of them and I would prefer they fell out than strip off and I have to drill them out of there. So let's go ahead and put them back in just to hold this on here. Now that the rotor's back in place, there's fingerprints and smudges of anti-seize and that kind of thing all over it. You don't want any contaminants on the rotor surface when you go to bed in your new pads. So you'll want to spray it down with some brake clean and wipe it off. Since I'm not entirely sure how well the brake clean will react to the protective coating they've put on here, I'm gonna spray it onto a towel first and wipe what I can away from it. Hopefully not damage the painted surface too much. To install new brake pads in the caliper, you have to compress the cylinder that's in the caliper and push the hydraulic fluid back out. The piston can be pushed in pretty much with anything that can apply a steady continuous force so long as somebody is not stepping on the brake pedal, generating additional hydraulic pressure on the other side. They make actual brake caliper compression tools like this one, which use the leverage within the brake caliper to compress the cylinder. That way you're not putting pressure somewhere else on the caliper and causing a fracture. So if at all possible, use the proper tool. Otherwise you can use something like a C-clamp and a piece of wood or something along the lines. You just need to make sure you don't tighten it too quickly and that you don't tighten it to something too soft. So driver's front is complete. Once uh, you have everything taken off, it's a lot easier to put back together because you're not fighting any rust or corrosion. One thing to worry about is if you don't get the piston absolutely completely set back into its housing, the new pads are large enough that you'll catch the edges on the rotor as you try to shove it on and it'll take chunks out if you're not careful. So just make sure it's perfectly straight when it's sliding on there and as absolutely wide as possible and it'll still be a snug fit. You'll hear it drag, it'll be stuck till this thing beds in, that's just the way it's gonna be. You'll hear a little bit of a drag. Um, there is a certain bed in process depending on what pad you have. So when you do this yourself, you'll probably wanna go ahead and check into the bedding process. I'll follow whatever the recommendation is from StopTech on these particular pads because I haven't had them before. But for now, I need to get back on to the other wheels. So hopefully they go a little smoother. All right, so now that we have new pads and rotors all the way around, it's a good idea to bleed the brake system, especially on a car that hasn't had the fluid changed in such a long time. So when I'm changing this fluid, what I'm going to do is loosen up this reservoir cap, which I've just noticed is leaking and actually allowed me to push some fluid back up when I compress the calipers. So what I'm gonna do is look to replace that seal eventually, but for right now, all I'm gonna do is clean it up, open the cap so that there's no pressure resistance at the top. I'm going to go down to the brake bleeder with one of my power brake bleeders and use co the compressed air to pull the fluid through the system. Normally, if you don't have a mechanism like that, you can just step on the brake pedal and pump it, and that will push the fluid through using the master cylinder's pressure. Instead, by drawing it through, what this will allow me to do is draw most of the fluid through the system, pour more fluid in, draw more fluid through until I eventually clean the whole system out. And I will do this wheel to wheel, one by one, and go all the way through, and the final bleed will happen on the opposite corner, pulling the last of the air through the whole system. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll just try to wrap this up real quickly. Okay, now that we've taken care of the reservoir up top and there's some fluid and it's ready to go, I've come down here, I've cracked open a brake bleeder and I've got my pneumatic eh, brake bleeder hooked up. So when I pull this trigger, 
air through from my air compressor will cause the fluid to be drawn out of the system. I'll continue to pull fluid from the brake bleeder while adding fluid to the brake reservoir and alternating back and forth until all the dirty fluid is out of the system. So I won't do all of this on camera, but when we come back, I'll be done with all four wheels, make sure that I have clean fluid, and we'll go take the car for a spin. So let me wrap this up for you. We just got back from doing the break-in for the pads and rotors. The break-in procedure wasn't included with the kit I bought, but we pulled up the StopTech standard um, aggressive street kit sheet that stated the best way to break it in is with 10 stops from 60 to 10 miles an hour until you bring it up into temperature. After the 10th, you just drive around, let it cool down until it comes all the way back down to a resting base temperature. Then do the cycle again, 10 hard stops, 60 down to 10 miles an hour, and then back up until you have basically smoked your pads again. Then after the next, that 10 set is done, you just go ahead and cool them down. That's what I did, gave it a lot of time to cool down as I just dawdled around the countryside. On the way back, the brakes feel great. Um, we did have one little weird situation where it felt like something might have come loose, and so we pulled over to check on it, but I don't think anything actually came loose. I think I just freaked out the ABS system breaking in these new things. Either the heat got so hot that some of the old fluid boiled in one of the calipers, or I freaked out the sensor with all the dust or something, and it just wasn't happy. But after giving it a chance to stop, do the final break-in session, and then drive it around, everything seems to be working great. Here in about six months, I'll do a follow-up on this kit in particular once I've had a chance to take it to this upcoming hill climb event and a couple autocrosses and let everyone know what I'm thinking about it and uh, in particular how the noise and the dust from these pads compares to some of the other pads that I've used. So until then I'll see you guys in the next video and hopefully this car won't be in the next one it'll be the 240Z. So wish us luck.